Good health to you, fellow Ukrainians. A brief report on the day. We are finalizing our preparations for the Ukraine-EU summit, scheduled for this week. In general, this week will be a week of European integration in every sense of the word. We are expecting the news for Ukraine. We are expecting the decisions from our partners in the European Union that will be in line with the level of cooperation achieved between our institutions and the EU, as well as with our progress. Progress which is obvious, even despite the full-scale war. On January 31st, I held a long meeting with the international bloc of the government and the office. We are preparing Ukrainian positions for negotiations with EU representatives. And very importantly, we are preparing new reforms in Ukraine. Reforms that will change the social, legal and political reality in many ways, making it more human, transparent and effective. But these details will be announced later, based on the results of the relevant meetings. On January 31st, as in fact every day, I held several meetings with the military and the head of intelligence. We are studying the situation in detail in all major operational directions and in the long term. What the occupier is preparing for and how we are already responding to Russia's preparations for a revenge attempt. Our defense and security forces, the Ukrainian government, our partners, all of us are making efforts to ensure that Russia not only fails in regaining ground on the battlefield, but also loses its last hope for aggression in its revenge attempts. Russia's great defeat will prevent any alternatives to a lasting and reliable peace. I think all our partners who support this position of Ukraine. On January the 31st, I spoke with Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau. I briefed him on the situation on the battlefield, on the constant assaults in the Donetsk region, on the situation in the south and at the existing threats. We discussed how our defense cooperation could be supplemented. We separately touched upon the issue of sanctions and Russia's international isolation. In particular, I am grateful to Justin for understanding our call to the international Olympic bodies that any concessions to a terrorist state are unacceptable. The Olympic movement and international sport in general must be protected from Russia's usual attempts to politicize sports. We have seen this repeatedly in different times. Now, Russian politicization of sport will inevitably mean justification of terror. This must not be allowed. It is only together with the free world that we can protect sport from those sport bureaucrats who are willing to turn a blind eye to reality for some reason. On January the 31st, I also spoke with Prime Minister of Belgium, Alexander de Croo. I thanked him for the powerful defense package that was recently approved. We discussed our cooperation on international platforms, particularly with the UN. We discussed sanctions against Russia and the next sanctions package. We also talked about cooperation in protection sports and the Olympic movement from propaganda of terror. And one more thing. Now there is a certain law with personal decisions. But this does not mean that all the necessary steps have been taken. There will be decisions. Those in the system who do not meet the fundamental requirements of the state and society should not linger in their chairs. I think each and everyone who is defending the state, I think everyone who is fighting for Ukraine. I am grateful for every Ukrainian position held at the front. I am grateful for every destroyed position of the enemy. Glory to Ukraine.